where does like where does the responsibility of the vendor stop and the work of the fund start to basically um, determine whether a new uh, raw or aggregated data set is additive to the investment process? Well, um, having been on both sides of the equation, I've been on the data vendor and on the data consumer. I have a very black and white kind of uh, point of view on that. The responsibility of uh, value is always on the data consumer, is always. Whether you find the value in the, in the data or not, it's all totally up to you. The vendor, the vendor has the responsibility to provide the most accurate, most timely, most um, clarified uh, data, but, and stand behind the methodology of how the data was collected uh, or methodology how was the data was uh, produced. Other than that, it's all in the eye of the beholder. I mean, that's... I, I think there is like a slight gray nuances here, which is if you are a raw data provider, you are completely right. It's, there is like a UI or an interface or a dashboard that like the final customer can leverage. You still need to do like a small extra step to make sure like the data is accessible in a in a way that the customer can use, right? Which means that you know, having a nice software that people can use promptly and having like a way to filter data and blah, blah, blah. If you are like an API guy that just like, you know, stream things into a database, 100% with you. Right, right. I agree with what everybody's saying. I think it's important to recognize that you have to kind of understand the data you're working with. I mean, like when I think about like what Turnleaf is doing, you've got a firm that's being run by two people that have used data a lot, that understand how to work with it that are experts in what they're doing. And so they're processing it in a way where they're adding a lot of value in doing that. And at the same time, because they're macro signals, it's something that potentially a lot of people can use. I think what you see challenges with is when people have very granular data that maybe speaks to a very small area. If you process it too much, you run the risk of like only one person can use it and really see the value in that data. And so it's how far down that path do you want to go? How much how much of the answer do you want to give away in the process? And as a result, what does that mean about how many folks you can sell it to, how you can price it, how folks can use it? You know, news data, everybody can read the news and everybody does read the news and analyze it. When you get into specific, you know, one specific interpretation of news sentiment coming from one particular vendor, that may have a much more limited audience because it's reading the news in a specific way. And so you have to say, you know, where on that continuum do you want to stop given what you're saying and what that means? But ultimately, it's a choice for the vendor to make in terms of their business model, and, and as Eli says correctly, the consumer ultimately has to decide what makes sense for them as a business. Yeah, and I also think, you know, there are many data vendors, you know, evaluate, to your point, Evan, trust, you know, who is selling you the data. And we had very negative examples of, you know, firms selling synthetic data, uh, firms that did disappear, you know, without mentioning any names, you subscribe, you read the contracts, you start paying, and they disappear. And, uh, you know, you have thousands of data vendors, so you have an ecosystem. So how, how to manage this and you know, how, how to make your third party due diligence process right, that, that, that's also very important. And it's continuously evolving, so we'll get it right.